We are pretty locked in on who the next Alabama could be. Last week, we teased something. We were talking about TCU, and uh, Rusty gave me some homework and gave all of us some homework. I hope you guys uh, took some notes here. We're going to get to the bottom of who the next TCU could be as Georgia has another national championship uh, matchup hopefully looming as far as the dogs are concerned. I think that we can probably agree Ohio State would have been a better national championship matchup. But when you look at the landscape of college football, and Rusty, you said, was it Lindy's that had TCU in the the mid-40s? If if we're thinking about a team that could be in that range this season, that could be knocking on the door of college football greatness, who do you all have? I've got a couple on my list, and they're both in the SEC. And I'll start us off. I think Kentucky and or Mizzou, uh, when you look at what those guys do, and it's it's because they play in the SEC. I know TCU is the Big 12, so that was a little bit different. They had a, a non-traditional path uh, compared to a lot of other programs around the country. But Mizzou has shown that they can be pretty pesky. Now, luckily for Georgia, they don't have to go to that death trap in Columbia. Uh, and the same can be said for Kentucky – you get them between the hedges as well. I just think that th- these teams are are tired of looking up at Georgia all the time, and I think they're a little bit better suited to do it uh, than Florida. Tennessee doesn't count because everyone expects Tennessee to be good. Kentucky and Mizzou, maybe one of those two teams sitting back a little bit, could play above their means this season. So that's my pick. Uh, kind of hedge my bet. But that's my pick for the next TCU in 2023. I'll go, but I don't know that I'll say this team is going to make it as far as TCU did. But they've had a hell of a couple of weeks, and I mean a sneaky couple of weeks. And they play on the tough side of the division now. But Arkansas has really done really, really good in this portal the last couple of weeks. And they have gotten some guys and won some battles. And uh, getting their quarterback back was a massive deal for this team. And you're talking about a team that won nine games two years ago, had some injuries last year, took some teams, uh, I think, three years in a row. Jake uh, Roos or Rowe, may correct me here, Palmer. I think three years in a row or two years in a row, Arkansas has had the toughest schedule in the country of anybody, period. And now they're getting rid of Texas on there. Um, They don't have to play Georgia uh, out of conference. So I I think uh, out of of league, I I think that Arkansas – is going to be a really, really sneaky team because they've got a unique quarterback that gives people issues. And if he can stay healthy, and they've added some key pieces there, uh, I kind of remember watching Pittman out there. They're pretty sneaky. Tough that's part the for big, them. That's the big it's key for them. And they got to go to LSU and, and Alabama and Ole mm-hmm. Miss. I mean, that's yeah. – like you said, it's the tough side of the division, and, and those that's certainly a tough schedule. And keeping KJ healthy is just massive – massive for them so yeah that's that i mean that's that's the difficulty there uh why not go with colorado let's why do not? colorado real fast <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it's gonna happen i just want it to happen no and listen know? would that not be the well, i mean people have said this listen if if dion were to do something like that i mean if you if you were even to sniff my god if the guy gets over 500 it's a huge success but, you know, people are saying, you know, there's odds on them winning the national championship. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you – good Lord. Yeah. Hey, they play Vegas Nebraska. Vegas coming they, down. They play Nebraska <laughs> week two. That'll be the most watched Colorado game since the 1990 national championship. Nope. <laughs> Matt, Matt Rule and, and, and with several Georgia guys will be in that game. Uh, I think corn yeah. the corn dogs, <laughs> corn dogs, corn dogs so maybe there will be a lot of eyes on Nebraska going to Boulder week two. already already started circling some games that kind of out of conference. I'll be interested in, and that will be heck. It wouldn't even, I'm not going to say game day is going to be there. I, but I was about to say it. They might, they might, that might be their chance for Dion to have, yeah. you know, to have a game day, uh, Nebraska, and I didn't realize – I talked to Sean Callahan, our Nebraska guy, the other night, and, uh, by the way, does a great job. For, the dude. Friend. I mean, he's awesome. He is freaking awesome. But I talked to him, and he said, Rusty, 
I know you don't know a lot about this rivalry, but man, neither one of these teams like each other. The fans don't like each other. He goes, it's going to be a packed house out there. So I thought that was an interesting Colorado and Nebraska. What do they have? That's back in the the day. Now the big eight. (laughs) I mean, both, both States are shaped like squares. I'm pretty sure or something (laughs) close close enough to it. They all kind of look the same. Uh, I believe I believe Rick Riley went to Colorado, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. I remember reading in the back page of Sports Illustrated one time about uh, he had this this like paragraph about how awful Nebraska was and how they basically just woke up in the morning and did steroids, and then for a morning snack they did more steroids, and then they you know all shot each other up with steroids for the rest of the day instead of going no. to class. It was pretty pretty That'd vicious. An allegation but, uh, there. I, uh, they do not like each other. Mm. I all. did some research. College game day won't be going there. They'll be going to Tuscaloosa to see Texas oh. and Alabama. Oh, see, all right. was, you heard, you that, heard that it here be, first. Well, that but was I'll tell you, yes, if Dion gets them over them, you will hear some rumblings. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Alabama, yeah, Alabama's got other games left. This will be their only chance, in my opinion, to get a game day at Dion. But uh, they'd be crazy to pass up Alabama, Texas. No, yeah, I'm, was, I'm not writing was, them off next season. This season seems a little too soon. No, like I said, that, uh, was, that was my scrappy pick was Alabama. Uh, those those scrappy guys that didn't make the yeah, CFP playoff last right. year. Uh, maybe they can battle their way back in and uh, be, a, you know, surprise. Alabama, people. this year's TCU. I yeah. like that. Uh, team most likely to get beat by 56 by against Georgia. No, um, I, I don't think it's Alabama. Listen, I'm – there's a lot of hype around this team, and so it's not like it's like a weird pick or anything necessarily, but – I just really don't know what to make of Florida State. I think Florida State can be really good. It's really about if Florida State will be really good. Um, How You're going to find out, I think, a lot about Mike Norvell, and I think a lot of people in Tallahassee are going to find out a lot about Mike Norvell or how they feel about Mike Norvell this season. Um, They're definitely one to watch. And then the other one that always lingers out there, in my opinion, is Utah. I mean, Kyle Whittingham Hmm. is one of the great coaches in this game. He always recruits well. He always stacks talent. Utah can never be written off when uh, Kyle Whittingham is at the helm there. So I'll say Utah's got the uh, best chance to be the surprise that TCU was last year. Yeah, it's just that Pac-12 curse, it feels like, man. When's the last time the (laughs) Pac-12 got a team into the national championship? Off the top of my head. Was it Oregon, Oregon, Ohio State? I mean, that was a, an eternity and then, ago. And then it was Oregon before that against Auburn in yep. 2010. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I've i been looking at the comments. There's two that I've seen and two that – they were two of the four that I identified. Washington, as we continue along with that Pac-12 theme, um, they're, sure. they're not quite as, as, you know, down in the dumps as TCU was. Um, but returning uh, Penix at quarterback, he's certainly capable – uh, and talking about quarterbacks, um, North Carolina, Drake May, I see that one in the comments as well. Um, the other two teams that I had, and and I'll go uh, with this one because I think it fits um, the TCU narrative a little bit. Well, first, Ole Miss was one that I had thought, and that's another team that Georgia's got to play. Um, Wes, you mentioned Kentucky and Missouri. Um, wrote about Kentucky last week, writing about Ole Miss and Missouri this week. Um, so come check those pieces out. But Wisconsin is the one that I'll go with. First year head coach Ooh. there. Um, you know, you, you look at their schedule. They, they bring in a couple transfer quarterbacks. Um, but you look at their schedule. They get Ohio State at home, uh, which I think is big. And, and that's a tough place to play. Uh, and, and then you avoid Michigan. You avoid Penn State. Um, you know, you get Iowa at home, um, you know, Illinois and, and Indiana and Minnesota on the road. It's just not all that tough of a schedule because, you know, as, as we talked about with Arkansas, that's the tough side of the, the conference. That's the tough division there. Uh, Wisconsin's in the easy division of the Big Ten. And and they they go to Washington State, so I guess that would be their big out-of-conference game. Um, but nothing all too intimidating about Buffalo and Georgia Southern. Um, and then – Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. <laughs> Statesboro could be tuning in. <laughs> And Florida may disagree, um, but no, I, I think you look at that Big Ten schedule and it's pretty manageable. Um, first year head coach and Luke Fickle, um, somebody that I think has a track record of getting a team to a playoff. I'll go with with with. Bleh. I will go with Wisconsin as mine. 
All right. Let's like get to some. Wait, I have. I, I, I got. I got. I got one more, and I think that it's a team that lives and dies by one guy, and uh, it's South Carolina. I was about to. That, so, if Spencer Rattler is the Spencer Rattler we saw at the end of the year, they could possibly even take a loss to a, a team like Georgia, because uh, I don't see them overcoming Georgia. But if you overcome Clemson and they and they got North Carolina on that schedule next year, that would be a very interesting team if he's able to produce yeah, some strength of schedule for sure. Yeah. And if you're going to do something like that, it's quarterback, it's quarterback play. If you're going to do something like that, you're talking about Washington, it's got to take yep. a Penix. It's going to take yep. a Spencer Rattler. It's going to take something like that to a KJ, you know, at, at Arkansas. A Max Duggan to, last year. Yes. So to to neutralize some things, it takes a dynamic quarterback, and that's those are great picks by both of y'all. Shador White. Sanders. <laughs> One of these teams will be playing against Georgia in the national championship. Shador, Shador and uh, Dion going to ride Ralphie out in the midfield. <laughs> Man, Ralphie is such an underrated oh, mascot. Would Ralphie but... make the trip to Houston? We think. I mean, is is Uga you think make Dion? You think Dion's going to leave anything behind in the circus, buddy? Not He's bringing the tilt the world. No. He's bringing Farrow the Field, thing. mate. They may put Farrow Field on the back of like a few semis and bring it out. I mean, <laughs> Uga, Uga whole... didn't make the trip to L.A. Is is Ralphie going to make the trip to Houston? Uh, oh, they got look. Uga is is mascot royalty. Ralphie, Ralphie's a dime a dozen. I think they bring uh, back up. Not letting him back up Ralphie's. And Matthew, C, Ralph. Matthew C over here is saying, uh, y'all laugh. Shadir Sanders is a great quarterback. I completely agree with you, Matthew. I think he is yeah. a fantastic. Yeah, but he he ain't elevating that uh, that deflation. There's a lot of there's a lot of that he that's he can't he lift like take that. it so high. I'm making I'm fun fair. of my own pick now. But uh, hey, if y'all <laughs> ever had a bison ribeye, you'd you'd like you'd like to you'd love to have a Ralphie in your backyard right now. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, all right. We can write off PETA for any sponsorship. <laughs> I don't think that was in the cards ever, Rusty. <laughs>